With me the studio is Minhas Merchant, uh, biographer, author and publisher. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Merchant. Lord Meghnath Desai, well-respected economist, Hello. thinker, writer, man of many parts and Thank you. the newsmaker of the day. Not making, <laughs> he, he's not writing the news out, he's making the news. Simon Denier, may I begin by asking, have you enjoyed all the attention that you've got all through the day today? How much attention have you got from the you government? Uh, I had one call from the PMO this morning, but obviously uh, some of the other attention has been indirect. Um, the attacks obviously are seen in the media as well. So I felt I had to, you know, come on Times Now and come on other channels to, to defend my story and defend my position. Thank you. What did the PMO phone call, who made the phone call to you and what was said? Uh, Pankaj Pachori made the phone call and he, he had a number of, I mean he, he complained about the story. His central complaint I think was about the silent uh, characterization of the Prime Minister and he, he talked about uh, the Prime Minister's speeches, press conferences and so on and so forth. Um, I pointed out to him that the silent, uh, the, the word silent actually comes, you know, the Prime Minister himself mentioned his own silence, but the criticism, and I'm really, I want to say very categorically, I'm reflecting criticism, which is widespread. It's not my comments. These are comments from extensive reporting and talking to an awful lot of opinion leaders in India, people in the Congress Party, people in the government and so on. You know, the criticism many people have of the Prime Minister is that he remained silent while his senior colleagues were corrupt, that he didn't do enough on the issue of corruption, and that he hasn't spoken out strongly enough within his own government to propose the kind of economic reforms which he is thought to believe in. That's what the silence refers to, and, and, and not whether he talks to me or the foreign no, press. No, so what was said? The, I'm, the I'm sorry, I want to dig What exactly was said by the PMO regarding the silent description of the Prime Minister? I what mean, did they, they say? They, they, said that, they said that I should have spoken to them about the story. Um, however, I had been in contact with them. So they were complaining, first of all, that the silent characterization was inaccurate. But then they were saying that I should have spoken to them about the story. And I pointed out that I'd requested interviews with TK Na, with Pulak Chatterjee, and on at least two occasions that I have documentary proof of, with the Prime Minister himself. Uh, and those requests were either... Uh, ignored or declined. Well, you know, before I come to Meghna this side, the Prime Minister himself said on the 27th of August that Hazaros Jawabo se achi meri khamoshi hai na jane kitne sawalo ki abru rakhe. My silence is better than a thousand answers. It keeps intact the honor of innumerable questions. Why is the PMO getting touchy over a description yeah. of silence here? You know, no, I think uh, it's a great overreaction to begin with. And uh, silence is never an option, and certainly not a defense. Not for a prime minister? Not for a prime minister, not for any leader. If you have a certain amount of accountability, which a prime minister should have, then silence is A, not an option, and B, not a defense. No, when the prime minister explains his silence on the cold scam, he said, my general practice is not to respond to motivated criticism directed at me. Is that a position a prime minister can take? Not, it's not an appropriate position for any leader in a democracy which is modern and progressive. It just cannot be taken. It's why, are, why, are, why are Indian prime ministers so touchy? I mean, Indian, Indian governments, but prime ministers so touchy. When it comes to the Western media, I mean, we know when, uh, I think there was a Time magazine piece way back on, on uh, Alex, Pe uh, this, this uh, Alex Perry's piece, I think, Time That's magazine, right, 2002. Right. And they almost uh, started digging up his credentials. I, I don't know how far they went harassing no, the journalists. Basically, a lot of insecurity, you know, uh, if an Indian paper had written something on Obama, which we do all the time, uh, you think the American establishment would react in any way, positively or negatively? Of course they would not. You've got to take this in a positive, you know, you, uh, basically the problem is that the Prime Minister, A, must but be... But Outlook held. actually did a cover with Obama calling him an underachiever, but they didn't yeah, get much of a response from the White House. That was an editorial decision which I think can <laughs> be called into question, but uh, it's their call. I think we should not overreact to, uh, uh, to foreign press. Uh, we have problems that we are aware of, and I don't think that the article that Simon wrote has said anything that we didn't know already. Well, yes, absolutely, and that's the point actually Simon is making. Mm. He's not saying I have, uh, you know, invented uh, some law of gravity here. No, he's regurgitating he, everything he, he, that we've been talking about for about a year now. He, he's putting across like, what has been written out in so many places, just yeah. that he's written in the Washington Post. Exactly. Now, uh, Meghna Desai, what about the response of the government? Government yeah. says, uh, this is yellow journalism. Uh, we must uh, write, uh, we will speak to the Ministry of External Affairs and, and government officials and do something on this issue. I mean, what can you do? 
You see, the Indian government thinks that all foreign press can be treated like it treats Indian press. You see, if the Indian media would have said this about the Prime Minister, they would have called up the proprietor, said there will be an income tax raid, the CBI will come to you, do you know who you are, we'll take your license away. That kind of intimidation that the government is used, government of any party, I'm not calling about Congress, they used to a docile press. And, and because the press is docile, it is only when the foreigners tell the truth that suddenly they begin to react. Now, what is the point of S.M. Krishna talking to Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton can't muzzle Washington Post any more than, than she can muzzle uh, the, the, in a Times Now channel. So I think the thing is, what, the, what Simon has said is what we all know. We have said it, but thank you, Simon, when you said it, it has more impact. We have a saying in India, Garki Murgi Dal Barabar, if, if, if the uh, domestic press criticizes uh, the Prime Minister, no account is taken of it. It's only when the foreign press says that. Now the question really is, how did a good man like Manmohan Singh, yeah. who was very competent, end up being a defender of his corrupt colleagues? Why did he, from being a dynamic reformer, end up being a silent observer of a corrupt government? And I think that is what we have to ask. This is where the rest of the Congress party has betrayed him and stabbed him in the back, and he has been left out hanging in the wind while they have all gone away. And they are all waiting for Rahul Gandhi to come back and rescue them. So he has and they don't care about Manmohan Singh so, anymore. So that is the reference to Manmohan Singh as a tragic figure as Simon Denier quotes. Now, Simon Denier also says in that piece, interesting comment, referring to the brief statement to the media, very brief, well-planned statement to the media, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it happens in Indian politics, but in America or, or, or in UK, you would expect a more detailed statement, maybe a detailed press interaction with the Prime Minister exactly. in these circumstances. I mean, I, I, exactly. I, I, exactly. I when, when there was a, when there was a big, uh, you know, political scandal that broke out in the United Kingdom, I think the British Prime Minister it's was having one press it's briefing arrogance. a day. That, that's the question tonight. Is this? Is it, arrogance? Is the arrogance of the Indian executive? Now, they, so, they think they think they can treat the media with contempt. What's but a British Prime Minister, as you say, or an American President, would treat the media with much greater respect and answer properly, rather than dismiss. Simon Denier writes. They have. Simon Simon Denier writes about that brief statement. He writes his brief statement to the media afterward. That is after when Colgate was going on, appeared to do little to change the impression of a man whose aloofness from the rough and tumble of Indian politics has been transformed from an asset to a liability. Now, you are talking about impressions basically, Simon. That the, here the impressions of a man, that, they used, that Manmohan Singh was, was worshipped literally for being so aloof from the rough and tumble and that's what made him special. Now the same people you are saying are turning around and saying he's not good enough for our political system. Is there a bit of an irony there? Exactly. No, no, that is absolutely an irony and you know, in a sense that's the that's the tragic nature of the story. I mean, Manmohan Singh had introduced the economic reforms of 1991, which have brought huge benefits to hundreds of millions of people. He, he, you know, he's not seen as having done that bad a job in UPA1. He was voted back in with a mandate, which many people saw as a mandate for him. So in a sense, you know, the, 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 the tragic nature of it is that perhaps, as, as, as Ramchandra Guha said to me, a man who didn't know when to retire and has, has been a big disappointment in his second term. But, you know, what I'm saying in the piece is what's being reflected by the other commentators who are talking tonight. You know, it, being an honest man, being aloof from politics, being distant from all of this, you know, seemed like an asset, but it really doesn't seem like such an asset anymore. And that's not my view. That's, that's the view of many, many Indians. Well, uh, Mr. Merchant, the article also says, take on another part, it says the 2009 election was a victory for him, as a victory for Dr. Manmohan Singh, but he did not step up to claim it. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah. it says maybe because he's too academic, maybe because he's too old. He it quotes a managing director at an investment firm and says that lack of leadership, that lack of boldness, lack of will really shocked us. Now, is that too subjective an opinion here? Because the other way of looking at it is mm -hmm. that Manmohan Singh was the person mm -hmm. who brought the Congress back. Yeah. No, I think right, because, we've yeah. got to be clear that uh, <clears throat> the real problem, the root of the whole issue is a duality of power. The head of the government in any democracy in any part of the world has to be the final authority. You have to have power with accountability. I mean, when you have Absolute. power and limited accountability, and there's another power center, which is, you know, uh, accountability and limited power, then there's going to be a dichotomy. And that dichotomy is really the root of the kind no, of... No, no, but there's no Sonia Manmohan disconnect. There's no, no food no, security bill, part, RTI no, amendment approach no, to growth. That's you, not know, the issue it's here. The, the issue is also partly the party. What is the, for example, subsidies? Now, Manmohan Singh can't push through certain... Um, uh, reforms and subsidies, etc. Why can't he do that? How would he know? He, how, how do we know he would have? No, he wants to. I mean, the entire Montexing Alualia, the no. planning commission, everybody no, wants. No, no, Mr. Budget, that's interesting. Are you mm. saying FDI and retail, the whole approach to growth, RTI amendments, food security bill, all this is something that he's simply following Sonia Gandhi's agenda? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. That the NAC is very powerful. Uh, it advises, but it also tells uh, the government uh, what it would like. Now, it's very difficult sometimes when uh, there are two power centers. I'm not saying that you know uh, this power center is right or that power center is wrong. But the point is, you cannot have the head of the government who is well, not that's an interesting point. In but in control of policy. But we may not make that this side. You know Manmohan Singh well. Can he recover from here? Yeah. Can he recover from here? No, I don't think he can recover from it. From because, here, from uh, here, as in from, you know, from today's position. Congress sorry, sorry, the uh, thing is, uh, he cannot recover because the Congress party has lost the will to govern. They were, they were hoping that Rahul Gandhi will come and rescue them, but Rahul is not going to rescue them. They don't care about Manmohan. Manmohan can't lead them in 2014. So, unfortunately, Manmohan is being sacrificed to the problems of the Congress party. Congress will lose 2014, and who knows when it will come back. But poor Manmohan will suffer and bear the brunt of the failure of the Congress party. Uh, Simon, last question. Are you surprised with the attention your piece got? Why do you think your piece uh, got so surprised. much attention? I I'm a little surprised because, as I said before, I'm really not saying anything that other people haven't said before. Um, so perhaps it you know, does reflect a certain insecurity on behalf of the government. I don't know. But yeah, I was a little surprised. I expected it after time's piece. I expected it to get a little bit of attention, but I wasn't expecting quite this. But, you know, um, I think the point is I focused on, on issues like the slowdown in economic growth, on corruption. That's what the real debate needs to be about, not what's in the Washington Post. You know, the real debate needs to be about whether this government is doing enough to get the economy going, whether it's doing enough to combat corruption, and whether Manmohan Singh is showing the leadership that he needs to on, on those issues. Uh, uh, it, it does, it, would a nationally televised press conference be an appropriate strategy at this stage? This, this is often done in, in several other democracies. I mean, no, this, this is a... You, Sometimes, you know, you're not allowed to speak in Parliament. You can't give a prepared speech outside. When you give a prepared statement, you'll be criticized, you'll be called rehearsed. The other option is that you just, you know, you have this open press conference. You throw yourself for questions and therefore directly through television you address the people of India. What do you think, Simon? What do you think from the American experience? What do you think? I mean, I think that, you know, holding a press conference is no panacea, but I think that regular communications with the people of your country about what you believe in and what you stand up for is really important. So, yes, of course, you need a leader who has the, you know, the, the presence and the charisma and the authority to really stand up for what he believes in. I, I think Manuel Singh actually after 2009 had quite a lot of authority, but, you know, address, if he believes in something, he actually did believe in something, the US-Indian nuclear deal, and he got it passed. He got it through Parliament. Um, you know, the question is, is he standing up for what he believes in, and is he speaking, you know, speaking to the people is important. Speaking to your own party, to your own cabinet members, to your own coalition partners, that's really important too. Yeah. Communication is vital, and that is a big actually, part of it. Well, eventually you do need support, much more than anything else. This is a moment of inflection, ladies and gentlemen. 
and uh, Simon Denyer's piece and the reaction to it or the overreaction is also perhaps a matter of deep thought. We must think why this was written. We must think why the reaction was in the nature that it came. Minas Merchant, Meghnath Desai, and of course, Mr. Simon Denyer. Thank you very much for joining me on the news hour tonight. Thank you. Thank you.